Welcome back to Candlewick Library. I'm Cheryl. Katie at Paperbacks and Ponytails announced that she was going to be doing her spring Christian fiction readathon again this year. Last year I didn't have a YouTube channel yet, but I still read along with her readathon and I thought it was a really creative one. So this year when she announced it, I knew I wanted to do it. And April is my birthday month and I had already planned on reading a lot of the Christian fiction that I have accumulated over the past few months because I just wanted some real feel-good books for my birthday month. She had this really creative idea where she asked authors their favorite flower and then she looked up the meanings of the flowers and then took the prompts from the meanings of the flowers. There are 10 prompts. I don't know if I will for sure get to all 10 and I even have a couple of books besides this that I want to read if I can get to them as well as the Louisa May Alcott books that I shared last week. But these are the books that I'm hoping to get to for these prompts. Number one, Magnolia, a character who is royalty. For this I'm going to read a Winter by the Sea by Julie Classen. This is book two in the Devonshire Shore series. I really liked the first book. This says that when the Duke and Duchess of Kent and their daughter, the future Queen Victoria, rent neighboring Woolbert Cottage for the winter, the Summer Sisters are called upon to host three of the royal family's male staff in their seaside house. So obviously it does have some royal characters in it. Number two is White Roses, a book with a married couple. I very recently found out about The Blythes Are Quoted by Ellen Montgomery. And as an Ellen Montgomery super fan, I can't believe I didn't know this existed. Apparently, this is a manuscript that was dropped off, I believe it was the day she died, and the editors thought that some of the stories in it were a little too dark or something, and so they made the short story, but they edited a lot of her work out of it. And I have the short story collection that they published. When I heard people talking about this book, I thought it was a fan fiction or something else that somebody had made recently. I didn't know that this was a reprinting with all of the work that they had edited out. I am beyond excited to read this, to have something new from Lu Lucy Mont Montgomery, since I've read everything by her except with the exception of some of her poetry. For a book with a married couple, that works perfectly for Anne and Gilbert. Number three is Double Delight, a book with a wedding. For that, I'm gonna read Shadow in Moscow by Catherine Ray. I don't know too much about this book. It seems to involve the CIA and KGB, but it does say that she has a hasty marriage to a character and it follows him to Moscow. So I'm assuming the marriage will be in the pages of the book. Number four, Sunflowers. This is supposed to be a character that is wealthy or in society. And I'm going to use The Inheritance by Louisa May Alcott that I'm reading for the other readathon for this. From what I understand, she has a huge inheritance but is hesitant to accept it. And so that would make her or somebody else in this book a wealthy character. Number five, Hydrangea, a character who is heartless or a villain. And for that, I'm choosing Metropolitan Affair by Jocelyn Green. This sounds like it's going to be all about Egypt fever when King Tut's tomb is discovered and the girl has been promised for a long time to be able to go to Egypt on an expedition with her father but it also sounds like she gets mixed up with something else and that they are trying to track a criminal so if there's a criminal in it then there's a villain in it number six lantana I've never even heard of that kind of flower I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look it up and see what that looks like a character that goes on an adventure so I chose the legacy of Longdale Manor by Carrie Taransky because the first sentence on the back says in 2012 art historian Gwen Morris travels to England's Lake District to appraise the paintings and antiques of an old family friend and so she's going on an adventure to the Lake District and I love the Lake District so I am excited to read this one number seven is carnation a mother daughter or mother-son relationship. I am going to assume I can also do a father relationship, so I'm going to do The Secrets of Pembroke Park by Julie Classen. And in this, it talks about the main character, Abigail, and her father. I don't know too much about it. It sounds a little bit like a mystery. Number eight, Lincoln or Red Roses, read a romance. And I'm going to be getting A Noble Scheme by Rosanna M. White for my birthday. Actually, a few of these are going to be my birthday presents, and I'll just pretend like I didn't already make this video. And this is book two in the imposter series and I really liked the first book. This is going to be telling us the story of two of the other characters in that book and it sounds like it's going to be a romance. Number nine, Peonies, a flawed character. I'm going to read A Heart Deceived by Michelle Greep. It's a sister and a brother. It sounds like the brother it has a mental illness of some kind and that that plays into the story a lot. And the last prompt, number 10, is Violet, a hero who doesn't claim to be one. And this one I'm twisting a little bit. I might change it if I read another book that fits it because I do have
have a few other books that I'm hoping to get to. I'm not going to share those right now because I'm just not sure what else I would read. And this is a lot of books, especially if you put it with the Alcott books. But I am planning on reading Unveiling Grace by Lynn Wilder. Her son, Micah, wrote a book about leaving the Mormon church. And I've always wanted to read his mom's book that she wrote of her perspective of their family leaving the LDS church. Their family has helped a lot of people. She is also going to have a group read. There was a, a poll where you could pick which book of the four that you wanted. So I don't know yet what the group read choice was and I'm not sure if I'm going to read it or not. So I'll let you know when I do the wrap up of April if I read it or not. Let me know if you are going to be taking part in this readathon or if you've read any of these books and tell me which ones should be the priority of the month.